welcome to the Rock Church and World Outreach Center podcast. We hope that this message will strengthen and encourage you. Now here's a word from Pastor Jen Cobray. I think I need to get down on my knees and pray. Forget about Paul and Silas. That was a great story. Read about it in your Bible. <laughs> Father, we just come to you in the name of Jesus, giving you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor. We thank you, Father, for a mighty move of your spirit in our hearts and our lives. We thank you for the kindness of God in this house. We thank you for the wisdom of God that manages this place, that we follow you, Holy Spirit. And we thank you, Father, for good things that are taking place in the house of the Lord. This house that you built by your, by your grace. And we are a grateful people. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We haven't come to hear from a man. We've come to hear from God. So, Lord, we ask you now, Holy Spirit, teach us, edify us, strengthen us, encourage us, guide us, guard us. Direct us and motivate us to be all that you would have us to be. And Lord, we'll give you the praise, give you the glory, give you the honor. Jesus' mighty name, with a great big shout, we all say amen. amen. Divine protection of God. I like this, seeing that's what we're talking about. I want to read to you out of Zechariah, the second chapter. It's really kind of an interesting verse. In verse number five of the second chapter, I'll put it up on the overhead while you try to find Zechariah. For I, this is God himself speaking. He says, for I, says the Lord, will be a wall of fire all around her. Speaking of Jerusalem. Listen to this. And I will be the glory in her midst. You'll find that as God speaks that, you can look at history and you'll find that God was just exactly what he was. A wall of fire around Jerusalem. And you will find that over and over again. But there was a time when it, Jerusalem failed. Did God fail? His desire is expressed here. And you find in the year 70 AD, which all of Jerusalem falls to the Roman Empire and comes in. But the desire of God is to protect. The desire of God is to manage. The desire of God is that his goodness would be displayed in their midst. That desire hasn't changed for you. That desire that God has to protect you and to protect me hasn't changed. Then how come Jerusalem fell? How come over the years you'll see a breach in the city where the enemy came in and took away those people that were called by God? Could it be that God failed? Never. You will find always that people fail in their relationship with God. They literally themselves pull down the walls of protection. Here's what I'm saying to you. God desires to protect you, to set a hedge about you, that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. But if you pull down the hedge, you pull down the wall, you find yourself in a place where you're not supposed to be, then you open the door for the devil to come in and rob from you. And sometimes, even though we're called Christians, we can be real stupid, doing stupid, silly things. And what we've done is we've let the devil in. And we wonder why he plunders our home and plunders our marriage and plunders our children. Because we let him in. And that's exactly what Jerusalem did. But the heart of God never did change. The heart of God was, I will be a wall of fire around her. I will protect her. I will be the goodness inside of her, speaking of the city. And then here it is that the city fails. And it's the same thing with Christians today. I know people who are successful. I know people who call themselves Christians that are biggest failures in the world. And it's all because we let our own walls down. And a lot of times we don't understand that. If you really desire the protection of God, and I know you do, I do too. I really desire, I really, can I just tell you something? I don't just desire. How about you? I need the protection of God. The older I get, especially how much I need the protection of God. 
going things, doing things, saying things, being things. I need the protection of God. And all of us that are in here really do need this. So all of a sudden we need to understand what it's going to take for us to get into a place where we can absolutely get going the protection of God. We can count on it every single day. And you know there's a right place and a wrong place. If you get in the right place, you can count on it. If you get in the wrong place, mm, you don't want to be there. Let's talk about God's protection. Three things simple for you to remember tonight. Number one, God's protection, listen to this, this is so simple, starts inside. What do I mean by that? It literally starts with who you are in relationship with God. If you have a lousy relationship with God and you're a compromised Christian, then you will find that the relationship you have with God will not uphold in a time when you need the protection of God. And I've seen it over and over years and years where people call themselves Christians and they're marginal in their walk. They walk on both sides of the fence and this position of compromise gets them to a place where, my goodness sakes alive, it's, it's a horrible, horrible place. Because compromise does nothing but defeat the future. And we find ourselves oftentimes on the inside living a life that is a double standard life with God. If you're going to get into God, then get into God. If you're not going to get into God, then get out. Jesus says, I better find you hot or cold because if I find you lukewarm, I'll vomit you from my mouth. In other words, he can understand hot and he can understand cold, but don't give me this half in, half out stuff. The half in, half out stuff is abrasive even to Jesus. And here's a God that wants to protect you. And you, as much as me, need that protection every day. I need it in my business. I need it with my marriage. I need it with my children. I need it for the future. I need it for the someday, some guy walking down the aisle. I need it. And I don't want you to know that, and you've got to understand something, we have a security system around this place, but the greatest thing we have is the protection of God. But because we have the protection of God doesn't mean we throw out the baby with the bathroom. That would be stupid, wouldn't it? And so all of us have to understand that protection that you want, need, in your business, and your, for your finances, and your future, your marriage, your children, your home, and every area starts with you, on the inside of you, because God has already said what he wants. He wants to be that wall of fire around you, taking care of you. It's fascinating, if you will, you know, we're going to do a lot of Old Testament stuff tonight. If you'll go with me to 2 Chronicles. When you get to 2 Chronicles, take a look at the 16th chapter of 2 Chronicles with me. In fact, let's, let's take a look at it uh, in, in this light as I read to you from verse number 9. Remember, we're talking about what's on the inside of you determines about what level of protection... Does God want to protect you? Absolutely. But I want you to catch this. How about the protection level of God? Oh, hear me now. I want to say it again. How about the protection level of God? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I want you to hear it again. How about the protection level of God oftentimes is based on where you're at with God? I mean, if you're messing around, sometimes he'll let you have the repercussions of messing around. Do you know what I'm saying? He'll give you grace for a while to get out of that problem. And then he'll let the catastrophic things happen in your life. And you say, God, where were you? Where were you? Listen to what the word of God has to say. Verse number nine. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. Stop right there. Look back at me. Here's God looking at everything. Sometimes we feel because our society is so filled and there's so many people upon the planet. How could God ever possibly See me. How could he know where I'm at? How do he know where I'm at? How does he know what I feel? What's, I mean, sometimes we feel like we're just kind of like cattle in a field and nobody really recognizes us. And here we find that God looks to and fro upon the whole earth. And then he says, 
to show himself strong. Doesn't that protect you? I mean, I need God's strength in my business. I need God's strength in my marriage. I need God's strength in my kids. I need God's strength in my, my prayers. Don't you need God's strength? I mean, let me say it again, and you answer me that one more time. Don't you need God's strength? I mean, isn't that what this is really all about? Is finding out how to do this? But God wants to show himself strong. Then why doesn't he? I need him to be strong. Why doesn't he show himself strong? Ah, read the verse. On behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. Well, what if my heart's not loyal to him? What if my heart is just kind of like, today I'm feeling good, I love you, Lord. Tomorrow I've got pressures and I'm really not there with you. What if my relationship is compromised? I, I'm okay with you as long as something else in my life that doesn't take my attention away from you is there. But here's what he says, whose heart, in the loveless word, loyal, that means in the time of good, you're still hanging in there. Time of bad, you're still hanging in there. Loyal means that no matter what comes along, your heart's still fixed to him. No matter if it's good, no matter if you're up, no matter if you're down, no matter if you're awake, no matter if bad things said, no matter how you feel, doesn't matter what you look like. My goodness, what he says to the person whose heart is fixed on him and can be counted on, he wants to show himself strong. Does that mean if somebody doesn't have a loyal heart, he's probably not going to show him strong? Finish the verse. This, in this, you have done, and he's speaking to the children of Israel, done foolish. In other words, you haven't had a loyal heart. You knew who I was. You even prayed to me. You went to the temple. You followed to the best of your thinking how you should act before me. But it really wasn't very good. It was really a very compromised thing. And then he comes along and he says, therefore, from now on, you shall have wars. Well, how did they get into a warring position? How did they get in trouble? How did their life get messed up? How did their situations take place? How do we get into a place where it doesn't seem like God is even there? How do we get to a place where God doesn't answer our prayers? How does it get to a place where we're always in a battle? We're always got something going wrong. Now, how is it that other people are blessed and we see that and we're not? Compromised heart, a heart that's not loyal. A heart that's fickle, a heart that's in and out, things like that. So remember I'm talking about this, it's kind of interesting. God's protection starts on the inside, just for fun. Let's take a look, if you will, in Psalms 34. In Psalms 34. And take a look, if you will, verse number 7. The angel of the Lord encamps all around just anybody who says the name of God. Does your Bible say that? Oh, wait a minute. Let's read it again. See if your Bible says this. The angel of the Lord encamps all around just people who occasionally have a commitment to God when they feel like it. Listen, the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. In other words, their deliverance comes because they fear God. I, I, I tell you what, I tell you what I fear. I fear God. I mean, fear man, who, who, I mean, what can man do to you when God's on your side? Why would we ever fear man for anything? We ought to fear God. And those that fear God, the Bible says, man, he will be a hedge, or a, a, if you will, a wall of fire. Because that's the heart desire. In order to get him to be that way, it starts on the inside. Second thing, we're talking about God's protection. You ought to make a note of this one. Protection comes with faith. You gotta know that you know that you know. You know what I found out about faith? The better I am in operation in the ways of the Lord, the more faith I have. Wait a minute, let me give you an illustration. When I'm crappy, anybody know what crappy means? You know, you act like a crap head. Does, it, does that bother you? We're in San Bernardino, go walk down the street. Come on, if that bothers you, turn off the videos. Stop watching television. Because you're hearing a whole lot more than that. 
But when my life is like crappy, my faith, my, my spiritual life is crappy, my faith is crappy. I find that when I'm praying and I'm fasting, I'm reading the word, I'm connected with God, look out, you've got problems coming against me. But, but in other words, protection, the things that bring God up for me is when I am right with God. If I'm not right with God, there's no way I have protection. If, if I've done things that I feel like are wrong, then all of a sudden my faith stinks. Has anybody ever been there? And you're wondering, well, I, you know, I don't know if I'm really going to get it. I don't know if I, I, mean, I really messed up. I really. And all of a sudden we find our protection comes from a... Lack of faith? No, faith. In fact, it's an interesting verse. Go there with me in Psalms 90. You're right there in Psalms anyway. Go to the 91st Psalm. Listen to this. Are you okay with me? Are, are, are you mad at me? Okay, so you're okay? Say okay. I mean, are you okay? We're talking about protection comes with faith. We're going to Psalms 91. I'm going to start in verse number four. And he shall cover you with his feathers. In other words, here's God protecting you. And under his wings you shall take refuge. Is that, is that not, is that not uh, protection? His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Now wait a minute. Let me just say it like this. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Let me say it one more time. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler. And you say, what does that mean? That means if you don't have faith in his shield, in his truth, you'll never have the shield and buckler. In other words, his truth doesn't just be my shield and buckler because it's truth. His shield is because I'm connected with him in faith. Because if I don't believe that, Why would I expect it? So no, let's take a look. Let's go verse number five. Uh, you shall be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day. In other words, have you ever said to yourself, man, I really don't know what's coming at me. This is really like terrible. The whole day's falling apart. If, how about it just, have you ever made a statement, someone said, how you doing? And you made a statement back to them and you said, oh, it's one of those days. Has anybody said that besides me? Raise your hand and everybody else is a liar. We've all said that. <laughs> it's one of those days. Well, that's, that's this verse that comes up. You shall not be afraid. Why? Because I've got faith. In the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day. Why? Because I know my God's my protector. And I've got to have faith in knowing that my God is my protector. And how do I have that? I have faith in his truth. Is that, uh, are you following me? Verse number six, just for fun. Nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, uh, nor the destruction that lays waste in the new day. A thousand may fall at one side and 10,000 at my right hand, but it shall not come near me. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Can you imagine being in the midst of a plague and a thousand falls on one side, let me get the right side, the left side of you, a thousand people. You're standing in the middle of a whole group of people. A thousand die. And wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, watch this. And on your right side, 10,000 die. And you're in the middle of the 1,000 that just died and the 10,000 that just died. You better know who you are in Christ Jesus. You better know what the scriptures have to say. You better know this verse. You say, oh, that'll never happen. Did you know the turn of the last century? I, I forgot, it was 650,000 people died of the flu. 1918, I think it was, something like that. Some crazy number. 600,000. Did you know recently in San Bernardino, 18 people died of the flu. They didn't know what it was that died mysteriously here in this city. Boom. Within the last 30 days. <laughs> you better know. See what I'm saying? This is all about confidence and trust and whether or not he's going to protect you. Thousand may fall at one side and ten thousand at my right hand, but shall not come near me. Verse number eight. Watch this. Only with the eye shall you look and see the rewards of the wicked. Because, verse number nine, you have made the Lord, you have made the Lord, you have made, 
Who makes the Lord? Because you have made, I should have highlighted the words, you have made. Is he? Yes. But you got to make it. Wait, you just missed that. You just missed it. Is he your protector? Yes. But you got to make it. Let's try it again. Because you have made. He, he, he already was the Lord. I didn't, have to, I didn't have to make him the Lord. He was the Lord. I had to make him Lord with me. Made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high, in the dwelling place. Verse number 10. No evil shall befall you, befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge, is that not protection? To keep you in all of your ways. In your hands you shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, and the young lion and the serpents, and you shall uh, trample underfoot, because he has set his love upon me. Therefore, I will deliver him. I will, because he has set his love upon me. Me, I will deliver him because he has set his love upon capital M. Me, that's God. Because you have made a stance to believe God for his truth. He becomes your shield and your buckler. You have made him Lord in your life. And because you've done that, I will set on him on high because he has known my name. Verse number 15, and he shall call upon me and I will answer him and I will be with him in trouble and I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and I'll show him my salvation all because you have made the Lord the Lord of your life. See, a lot of people who call themselves Christians really don't do that. They just call themselves Christians. <laughs> Got your attention. It is true, and you know it. And sometimes we can be that same way. We can go through the routine of this and never have the relationship of this. That's what this is all about. You've got to know inside of you that protection comes along with faith. Last one. First one, God's protection starts inside. Second one, protection comes to faith. Last one. He protects, we rest. Because if you're not in rest, you're not going to be protected. Jesus says it like this. Come ye, all you heavy laden, and give, uh, uh, give me your burdens. And I will or put your yoke, I will give you my yoke, which is easy. Jesus makes it very clear that we're to come give him our, cast your cares on he that careth, the Bible says. So it makes it very clear. Exodus, the 14th chapter, I'll just pop it up on the overhead. Verse 14 says this, watch this. The Lord will fight for you. Is that not protection? Watch this. And you shall hold your peace. In other words, you've got to rest. While you're in a fight, frustration and worry, concern is the wrong position. You gotta rest. You gotta hold your peace. Why? Because when you're in faith, you gotta know he'll take care of you. If you're not in faith, there's no rest, there's no peace. If you're in a fight, if you're in a fight for, for your health, if you're in a fight for your finances, if you're in a fight with your families, if you're in a fight for your jobs, if you're in a fight for the future right now, if you're in a fight for your own sanity, my goodness sakes a lot, God's going to protect you. You're going to have to rest. Amen. I love the word of God. One more quick verse in 2 Chronicles 32nd chapter verse number 8. In fact, let's, let's just pop up uh, 2 Chronicles verse number, is it verse 7 that I, I want you to check out? Did I, did I say verse 7? Yes. Listen, Nebuchadnezzar also carried off some of the articles of the house of the Lord of Babylon and put them in the temple of Babylon. Now, that's, you got the wrong, this is 2 Chronicles 32, verse 8. Let me, 
It's going to make me turn there, guys. Now, you got it? Heard Second Chronicles 32, verse number 8. With him is an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God. With a regular man who's coming against you, with trials and pressures, all the stuff of the world that comes against you, they have nothing but the arm of flesh. But on your side, listen to this, you have the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. And the people were strengthened. Tonight you ought to be strengthened that you're not alone. What's coming at you is common to man. That's what man does. It's all man can come up with. But there's a God you come up with. I love that. I love what David said. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that defies the armies of the living God? He takes out his little sling and cuts the guy's head off and kills him. And can I just tell you this right now? Who is the armies uh, of the living God? You and I. And who is this uncircumcised Philistine, one without God? We're a people. We're not the arm of the flesh, but we have the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battle. And that ought to strengthen you every single day. Now, wait a minute. Let's take it down to a practical position. You don't know how you're going to make it. You don't know how you're going to pay your bills in the future. You don't know how you're going to get that position, get that job, get that business started. You don't know how you're going to make this thing work. It seems like it's falling apart. You don't know how anything is going to happen. The arm of the flesh is the only power that the world has to offer. But we've got God on our side, and he will fight our battles for us. Therefore, we need to be strengthened every day in the word of the Lord. A thousand may fall on one side, and ten thousand in my right hand, but no plague will come near my house. Because of the protection of the Lord. Tonight, you're not alone. Tonight doesn't matter. Yeah, I'm talking about wild Christianity. But tonight, I'm here to tell you it doesn't matter what anybody mounts up against you that tries to stop you. If you put your heart on God, on the inside, he says he's looking for people that will be loyal to him, that he can show himself strong to. And then he comes along and says these words, that it's your faith by making him Lord of your life. And then he comes along and he makes this statement. He says these words that are brilliant words. Not only, the, but you need to rest because you know without a shadow of a doubt he's fighting for you. So God will pick up the battle. God will win the battle. You don't have the arm of the flesh working for you. You have almighty God. So be encouraged tonight. Come on, give the Lord a great big praise. I just want to make sure everybody's all right before I dismiss you. If you need to get right with God tonight, please listen, and I'll let you go. If you need to get right with God tonight, you've been messing around, you're compromised, you're half in, you're half out. When I was talking about that, you know that was you. And you know it. Why don't we get right with God by giving God all of our heart and giving God all of our life? God won't steal your heart. He's not a thief. It's your heart. He won't rob your life. It's your life. You have to make the commitment to give God all of your heart. It's yours and all of your life. And that's called John 3rd chapter, being born again. And then you get right with God and you can live on this planet with the protector on your side. Tonight is your night. I really believe there's 12 people that need to just get right with God right now. And 12 of you need to get a hold of your coat, purse, sweater, Bible, friend. And I want you to do something. I want you to, you know who you are, and you need to get up and meet me right here in front. You just stand up, whoever you are that needs to get right with God, get your stuff, and come up here. And there's 12 of you. There's one. Just everybody else sit for a minute, except for Pastor Joel. Let's go ahead and sit down. Sit down. 
No, you don't have to get on your knees, my brother. Just stand right there, even though you feel like it. Come on. There's one. There's a bunch more. There's, there's 11 more. There's 10 more. And there's nine more. You need to get right with God. Just, just come. Stop messing around. Let's give our hearts and lives to Jesus. There's nine more of you. You're saying to yourself, I know I don't think I can have the courage. Stop and think about it just for a second. For you, Jesus, the Son of God, a beaten, bloody mess, creator of the heavens and the earth, people spitting at him, calling him names, making jokes about him, stealing from him his, his robes and stuff, belittling him, making a shameful experience for him. And he goes to the cross and dies publicly for you. And you're going to tell me you can't because you're more afraid of people, what they think, instead of what God sees, to get out of your seat and come for Jesus. If he can do that for you, then you need to come. There's eight more, there's seven more of you. You need to come right now. There's six more of you. There's six more of you need to come. Six is a lot of people. Six of you need to come give your heart to Jesus. Tired of messing around, tired of being compromised. There's five more of you now. Time to come home. That's what God's saying. It's time for you to get out of your seat and come home. There's five more of you need to come. I can't make you come because it's got to be your heart. But I can tell you, you need to come. Five more of you. You're saying, I wonder if it's me. Boy, if you just said that, that's you. That's you. Get up, get your stuff. Just like these people, be courageous enough to give God all of your heart. There's four more. There's three more. Don't miss this. If you think it's you, don't get shut out. You need to come. Just tell your neighbor, I'll go with you. Come on, let's go. Go ahead. If you're sitting next to somebody, just tell them. They need to know. They can bring you up. How many more? Three more? Three more. Need to come? You come right now. Come on. Come on. There's two, there's one more, but I think maybe someone's coming. Is that both of you or one of you? One or two? Two. One more. One more, and you're going to miss this opportunity? One more? There ought to be five of you coming. There ought to be five of you coming. Oh, here's two more. There ought to be five of you coming. Well, there's two more. So there ought to be at least three more of you that comes. We've already got the original 12. Anybody else you need to come? See, you almost missed it. Is there more? How many more? Two more? Oh, there you are. They raised their hands and said, here we are. Thank God you've come. Yep. Thank God, thank God, thank God. Thank God, thank God. All right. I'm ready to tell you some instructions, but here's the deal. God just spoke to me and said, that, can you imagine this? I'm all, I mean, we had a hard time getting these people up. First 12, then the four extra, the five. And, and, and now he said, don't give up. There's five more that need to come. I must be out of my mind. I must be the biggest loser, weirdo. You ought to go to Calvary Chapel next time you want to go to church. Because I'm an idiot. I just believe God. There's five more of you right now. And Calvary Chapel is a great church. I'm not belittling it. But there's five more of you. God spoke to me. 
Can you imagine that? Am I an idiot or am I an idiot? I mean, I, enough is enough. Getting 12 was scary. And then the others, now there's five more of you that need to get up and get over here. Oh my, here we go. Thank you. Isn't that fun? Isn't that fun? Come on, just stand right here, just for a second. It, wait a minute, don't come. Just go back, sit down for a second. Isn't that fun? Five more. That was six. So obviously we're finished. Oh no. That was six. God told me five. So there's five more of you going to come right now. I know. I've lost my mind. I should quit while I was ahead. Can you imagine everybody walk out of here and say, oh, that Pastor Jim, <laughs> he is wonderful. <laughs> I'm blowing the whole witness. But I don't care. I'll fight for your souls until there's not a breath in me. Now, wait a minute. Nobody clap because you're going to scare these people away. Now, there's five of you that have been compromised long enough, and you need to get up here and give God all of your heart and all of your life. You don't have to all be sitting together. You can just come one at a time from wherever you're at or bring somebody with you, but there's five more of you, and I can't make you do it, whether you come or don't come, because only the Holy Spirit brings people to the Lord. So where are you? So where are you? The other day I was said the same thing and they didn't come. They caught me at the back door and they said, Pastor, that was us. I said, why didn't you come? We were afraid. What's there to be afraid of? God who wants to protect you? One more, few more seconds and you're going to miss this. And you know who you are. Can you imagine that God would stop this whole service for you? For you. Because you're, you, you know what? You, you know God in your head, but you're compromised in your heart. And, and you don't want to admit that. You don't want anybody to know that. So you're, you're, you have a little pride issue there, but that's okay. God will get rid of that. Tonight is your night. Five more of you. Five of you. Where are you? Because I'm past my time. And I want to get everybody out on time. And I've done my job by being faithful to God. Being faithful to God. I'm, I've done my job. Where are you? You know you get, need to get up here? You come. I'm just going to just shut up for a minute. Let the Spirit of God touch you. Thank God you guys have come. Let's give the Lord a great big praise for all of these wonderful saints of God. Now, SPTs, you can come. All the SPTs, let's come forward. These are people that are friends, and we'll explain what that means in a moment. This is Pastor Joel waving at you over here. Really good guy, no weird stuff. He's going to do three things. One, he's going to pray with you to invite Jesus into your heart. Two, 
He's going to give you some free stuff. We love the free stuff around the rock. Anything that's free, we at the rock love it. That's our F word, free. And three, he's going to introduce you to a friend. That's the people standing behind you that'll help you, meet you, buy you a cup of coffee, encourage you. You need people to encourage you and to go forward with the things of God. Only takes a few moments of people you came with, they'll wait for you. If they don't, we'll make sure you get home, but they'll wait for you. You better wait for them. Anyway, this takes just a few moments. Make a left turn. Follow Joel right over there. Come on, let's give the Lord a great big praise. Hey, you just heard that altar call. You just wanted to give God all of your heart and all of your life. Now let me lead you simply in a prayer of inviting Jesus Christ into your heart as your Lord and Savior. In fact, why don't you just go ahead and listen to me. Go ahead and close your eyes and just repeat these words after me. I'll go slow. You repeat them. Say these words. Say, Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I believe that Jesus Christ is your only begotten Son and that you sent Him for me and that He died for me on that cross at Calvary. I believe that His blood washes away my sins, that I am now a new creature in Christ Jesus. And I thank you, Lord. I receive you now and forever as my Lord and as my Savior. I'm going to turn from sin and I'm going to turn with all of my heart and all of my life to you, Jesus, as my Lord and as my Savior. Let it be known in heaven as well as upon the earth that I am born again. I'm a child of God, that I'm saved, and I'm headed for heaven and denying my presence in hell. Thank you, Jesus. I'm alive forevermore. Love you so much. God bless you guys. Everybody just say amen and receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. So talk to you later. God bless you. Bye-bye.